it's okay to take a mental reset, a break, a pause, and just relax. You know, the most recent case where I felt as if I was on the precipice of encountering burnout, I decided to just take a break from a lot of things and just take mental health days and just take a step away, think about what it is that led me to this point. And then it's not something where it's an overnight fix where you just snap your fingers and you're back in the saddle. That That's not how it works. This is a, it's a slow rebuild, but... I have to say it was about last week. I woke up one morning, Matt, and I was like, wow, like I feel pretty good. Like I kind of feel like before this burnout happened. I love that you took something from a moment of real challenge in the last year and through self-reflection after your brother's house events, Mm -hmm. uh, you took action. Everything you've been talking about so far checks out because you're you're on the 10X rule, which uh, I have that book on my shelf. It's it's definitely an action taker's book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I love that, you know, you're asking, what if I did this, then you're doing it. And I never never consider running and you're, you're doing it. You have mentioned the word therapy, which would have been a stigmatized word a decade ago or more. And now uh, it's something that's actually, yeah, I'm kind of proud of it that I've done therapy too. And it, it makes me feel good, better, right? Uh, so... Out of all these moments of self-reflection, a lot of a lot of good has come from the self-reflection and the actions that have happened as a result of that. So you didn't curl up in a ball and play the victim card for long. You may have been in that moment from time to time, but you right now have come through. Uh, and uh, kudos to you, my friend. Um, yeah, that's a lot to Thank unpack you. in the last year and a lot of progress that you've made. It's interesting because at the age of 37, I remember... Now at 47, it was when I was 37 that I started this business that I'm in now, you know, as a business coach, right? So I was also in a reflective, introspective time about my choices, about my health and physical fitness and, and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. And I, by the way, it was 10 years ago that I met and Julie and got married and, you know, started to have a family. So all, all kinds of things happened. And it was in that, that age range. You know, I, can you look back in your life and see through your highs and through your lows, these moments of reflection and how your path has wound around those. I mean, an example, my dad died when I was 28, real, real bottom and low, Uh, but a lot of good has come from that. And then we rose back up, so to speak. And then maybe got a little bit lazy, hit about 280 pounds uh, and then lost 57 pounds and, you know, down in the, in the 220 range now, uh, similar. This is around that same age, mm-hmm. right? Around 36, 37 for me, right? So I wonder, you know, where these moments of self-reflection, how you built an amazing, growing, thriving business out of all of these places. So can you, can you take us back to the beginning of your business and how you got into it and, you know, where you're taking it? Yeah, that's a really good question. So back in 2000, when was it? 2014, 2015. Okay. Setting the stage, I graduated college in 2011 uh, from the College of New Jersey with a math education degree. And your natural progression is when you graduate with that degree is to go to a school and teach, right? Whether that's middle school, high school, um, et cetera. And A lot of the jobs that I apply for were hiring in-house candidates or they knew someone. And sometimes life is a funny way of telling you that, hey, this is maybe not the path for you, but there's there's something else. I'm not sure what that path is. So I thought, oh, maybe it meant for me to go to graduate school and apply and do all of that. And suffice to say, I applied to a couple schools, did not get in. And I'm like, well, okay, so this is not the route for me. So what are we, what are we doing here? But I always loved working with students, whether Mm -hmm. it's a group or small group settings or even one-on-one. So I decided to start tutoring and I met a family back in 2015. They own a car dealership here in the wall, Manasquan area and much thanks to them, they are listening. Uh, they own Brian's Auto here in uh, Wall Township. And yeah. it was really interesting because they were saying how I was doing a great job and they were going to refer me to their friends and people that they knew. And to be honest, I was a little skeptical because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. 
I wasn't sure if it was just going to be one or two people. And they're saying, well, you're going to have so many people that you're going to be able to leave whatever it is that you're doing full time, which was an office job at the time, and make this your full time gig. And they were not kidding. Uh, I got to a point where I was able to leave um, an office job full time just to pay the bills and decided to go in on this tutoring. And back then, I would go to people's houses. I was doing house calls. It was just me just doing it. Okay. And definitely a lot of long hours. Um, I was doing that model up until about end of 2017, early 2018. I got a small one office space just to try to test out this theory of like, hey, would people come to me? And almost everybody did. And for those that didn't, it was either online or maybe I lost one or two people, but it just made things so much easier. And that was going up until about when COVID came about, which, as we all know, was around March 2020. We had our lockdown. Okay. And it was still mostly just me at that time. But the education market was in flux, right? A lot of people yeah. needed help during that time. Um, my school still- closed that my kids were going to at that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was definitely an interesting time. Yeah, challenging time. there was a lot in flux. But um, during that time, it just became so much that I started to, and I, and I, I, the reason why I bring up the therapy and stuff too is because I was getting burnout and burnout yeah. is very, very real as an entrepreneur. Actually about three, four weeks ago, I was pushing so hard on so many things that I started feeling those effects again. So I actually took a time out from a couple of things, social media included. I, I just needed to pump the brakes and just okay. say, okay, I've been down this road before. I know what happens if I keep pushing. And I was really, really considering, and this happened again, you know, a couple of years ago, I've had a couple of times where I thought about what if I just close my business down because I, I just can't continue this way. It happened during COVID. Uh, it okay. happened about 2021, 2022. It happened again. But that experience during COVID taught me a lot that I don't have to do it all myself. I can hire people. I can have staff. I can have other tutors. I don't have to be a one-man show because doing it that way was just so much. It was just so much work. I mean, and, you know, it's easy to say, well, Glenn, you have so much work. You should be grateful. You know, this is a lot to be happy for. Yes, but too much work is not always a good thing because you feel that you have to uphold yourself to a certain standard. And me, I take a vested interest in every kid that we work with, whether it's me working with them or my staff working with them. I have a personal vested interest. That's just how I do things. It's just how I care about our students. And I realized that when things like that happen, it's okay to take a mental reset, a break, a pause, and just relax. So, you know, the most recent case where I felt as if I was on the precipice of encountering burnout, I decided to just take a break from a lot of things and just take mental health days. And just take a step away, think about what it is that led me to this point. And then yeah. it's not something where it's an overnight fix, where you just snap your fingers and you're back in the saddle. That That's not how it works. This is a, it's a slow rebuild. But I have to say, it was about last week, I woke up one morning, Matt, and I was like, wow, like, I feel pretty good. Like, I kind of feel like before this burnout happened. And ironically enough, that's when we restarted our social media and started back up on doing things. And I think it's important to recognize that if you're doing a lot of things, make sure that you're giving time for yourself because I've been in the road where you're part of all these networking groups, you're growing your brand, you're growing your business, you're doing things at home for your family, your friends, and You can only do that for so long before something gets. And unless you are carving out time for yourself, that's going to happen a lot quicker than you realize. Yes, sir. And it was, there was nothing, there's a definite correlation between I wasn't going to the gym as much and I started encountering burnout. Now I'm going back to the gym four times a week, sometimes five. And I'm noticing carving out that time and doing these things for yourself really helps prevent burnout. And I'm here to say, as an advocate, to take time for yourself. It is so important to do that. 
I don't believe in true SOS emergencies unless you're a doctor or working in an ER room. So okay. in my okay. business, even with tutoring, I don't mean this any sort of way when I say this, families and students, but there's not a true SOS emergency. Is there something that's urgent? Yes, but it can wait a couple minutes. It can wait a couple hours. We'll get back to you. It's, it's, it's okay to not treat everything as it has to be done immediately.